What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna be going over something new. We're gonna be talking about something from Smith & Wesson, and it's in this bag. Can you guess what it is? Well, if you've been watching YouTube today, I'm sure you can, because today everybody else is also doing the release of the Smith & Wesson folding carbine. So let's take a look at it here in its natural environment, <laughs> which is in a bag. So this is essentially a folding nine millimeter carbine, and the whole concept behind the folding nine millimeter carbine is to make it small so you can store it in case you need it. And I think so far, they've done a pretty good job at that. And as you can see here, it is 16 inches overall length when it's folded. So it's about the same length or a little shorter even than an AR upper. So think of this as something like comparable to an, putting an AR upper together. That's kind of what I talked about with the pivot gun. Why would you want the gun to fold? Well, you want it to fold until you need it and then you want it to unfold quickly. So how does the M&P FPC actually fold? Well, we actually have a little notch here that folds it over and then it catches on the charging handle here, polymer uh, rail with a polymer charging handle and it sticks together like that and if you want it open, all you gotta do is pull it. So there's no real locking mechanism that can keep you from folding your gun out if you needed it, which I actually do like because if you are gonna fold it out to use it, you're gonna be in a pretty big hurry. So what you're capable of doing then is having this very short overall package inside a car, underneath a seat, wherever, a boat, plane, wherever you want it, and then you can fold it out to a 16 inch nine millimeter carbine that carries its own ammunition. So it comes with three mags with the gun, and it comes with essentially an M&P lower, very similar to the Ruger LCR carbine, and you get one uh, 17 round magazine, and then you get two, if I can get them out here, 27 round, or 23 round, 24 round, something like that, uh, capacity magazines that come with the gun as well, and they are stowed in your stock as you see there. And they do have retention on it with these little buttons right here, which we will talk about here in a little bit. So basically you stow the gun, fold it, and I would probably stow it with the mag in it, to be honest with you, and all your safety guys are gonna be getting after me. But the reality is the gun cannot fire folded, so even though it's pointed at me, it's non-functional. And even if you did have one in the chamber, it would literally just fly out, because the chamber's right there. And even if there was one in the chamber, there's nothing to hit the damn thing. So there's no possible way it can actually hurt you in this configuration. And then if you wanted it, you break it out, charge it, and go to work. And that's your charging handle here. We have a uh, slide release, slide stop here. Magazine release here, cross bolt style safety like on a Remington 870. I don't love that, but I have to admit if it's gonna be there, I'd rather have it in front of the trigger guard where I can easily hit it instead of the POS, I mean the POF from the other day where we had a hard time getting to it because it's like where your knuckle sits and I was accidentally hitting it with my hand. That's a piss poor design, whereas this has done a little bit better. It's even textured and it's even flush with the gun, so that's relatively well done. Uh, the folding mechanism seems pretty uh, strong, pretty large, which is nice. This is a blowback action nine millimeter PCC at the heart of it. The folding thing is cool, but when it's unfolded, it is just essentially a 16 inch blowback nine millimeter pistol caliber carbine. And let's get the elephant in the room out of the way right away. Is this a copy of the, <laughs> the fucking kel Sub 2000? Probably. Uh, the kel Sub 2000 was the first that I'm aware of folding nine millimeter carbine. It's very light like this is, like five pounds, and it's very compact when you do fold it. However, there are some downsides to it. First big one is that when the kel folds, it folds over the top and you're unable to put optics on it. That's actually why I've owned two and got rid of two. The second reason that I don't like the kel is because if you can't have an optic, you have to use the god-awful iron sights. The third reason I don't like the kel Sub 2000 is because their trigger components are plastic, and wow, what a great idea that is. So your triggers can wear out and that doesn't work. Fourth idea I don't like the kel is because it says kel on the side, and kel has a round count of about 50 before they break. So I decided I would try the Smith & Wesson instead, since they don't make stuff out of pot metal, melted beer cans, and plastic they got out of somebody's dumpster. Good texture on the grip here. We have a micro Aimpoint T2 on there because I always think it's funny when I have more expensive optics than the actual gun. Uh, the gun comes out at around 700 bucks MSRP, but I'm sure you're gonna find these less than that. 
we'll get into this guy and we'll go shoot it and we'll see how it goes. Before I do that though, I do want to mention my patron supporters. Thank you guys very much. It's because of you. We have cool guns, optics, and ammo and all that stuff on the channel. You support me and I thank you for it. We try to be the most honest gun channel on the internet and if you want to support that, just go down the link, hit the patron, and sign up. Also in that description is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. It could really use your help. So please go down there and help those kids. And finally, I do want to thank Smith & Wesson uh, for sending this over for test and evaluation. Even though Smith sent this over, it does not guarantee a good review. So let's go and see how this thing actually shoots. All right, so let's load this pig up and see how it goes. Folk. Safety on. Hey, my red dot's on, that's kinda nice. That is nice. Hey! Well, I gotta tell you, it already performed better than the POS. <laughs> well, Nick was right. It shoots nice. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> so, uh, first impressions are not always correct, as it turns out. I was at uh, Elliot's at Mr. Gunn's picking this up. Smith sent this to me. And uh, I was like looking at the POF uh, tombstone and looking at this. I picked them up at the same time. And I like, I like, I was more excited about the tombstone, but the tombstone ran like shit and immediately hated it. And this thing actually shoots pretty good. There's a lot of ergonomic issues we're gonna talk about in a second, but as far as like the shooting, which is the most important part, Obviously. it shoots well, yeah. Well, I mean, we're at 75 here. I mean, come on, it's a fun gun. Yeah. Get a little hip. Low. I'm getting better at that. Yeah, you are. I'm trying to practice because Nick does it all the time. And we're out. So let's talk about some of the ergonomics. First off, it's been reliable. Uh, the slide release is not great. So the first thing I noticed is if you're gonna push a slide release, you gotta have a pair of balls on you. Because as you can see here, this caught my finger the other day, but we're gonna do it again for entertainment purposes. But if I was going to drop the chamber from the left side, as you can see there, you basically have to stick your thumb in the chamber and then press down. Oh, this hurt so bad the other day. I can't even do it. And when you have to lock the chamber up, it's also very difficult. I'm not gonna do it, I'm too scared. But I can't drop it from that side either. I literally can't even drop it even if I want to. So I gotta hit the charging handle. Here, one more time, I'll try to really ram on it. See, I can't even move it. Second ergonomic issue I don't like. If I'm coming for this mag, right? See this right here? This should have some sort of pressure retention on it. Because if I'm shooting right here, boom, 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 and I'm coming down for a reload, I'm not gonna be wanting to fiddle with whatever shit this is. So not only do you press this side and this mag doesn't come out, you have to press the opposite side for the mag to come out. And as you can see there, you have to like take your hands off fire control and all kinds of stuff. And even then, the mag is in reverse. So it should be like this. That way you could strip the mag out and stick it in the gun. So That's just not how it is. It's kind of one of these designed by engineers and not by shooters type of thing, I think. But I mean, seriously. Now the next thing, put the safety on here. What are these? Why is that there? I know that's like a stop so you don't insert the mag too hard, but why don't we just make the base plates taller? I mean, what is the purpose of that thing? I've always other had Other than just to get that. in my way, because that way they can do that, and then when you try to shove the mag in, you can't get it in. I hate when I shove something in and it won't go in. Me too, I just go harder. Okay. All right, now the safety does work pretty good. See here? But you can't use it with two hands, which kind of sucks. And if you were lefty, that also is very difficult. So you'd have to come up, press here. Put the safety on easier, I guess. Now, the one thing I do like is it is drop safe, obviously, because it does have the trigger safety. So that's kind of cool. Now, let's take this mag out here, run this out. 
was kind of practice folding it in and out and obviously I haven't done any practice with this at all. So one of the things I do want to do is I want to have you on that side just, in, just so when I fold it every time it doesn't look like it's flagging you. Even though it obviously can't work like this, I still, still does make me feel a little weird. So I pick the gun up, fold the gun out, charge the gun, take the safety off, which I'll probably always forget. Okay, hold it, load it. Nah. It's not like super fast in action, but honestly neither is the kel and neither is the Pivot Gun or any of the other um, any of the other competition toward this. I would say this is probably the fastest, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Let's set it on the table and try it again. Probably leave it loaded if I was gonna leave it anywhere. Pick it up. Forgot the safety again. I don't like the safety, I have to admit. But hey. Still does that though, and I do like that. Vintage. The, the biggest redeeming factor behind this thing is that it shoots really good. That was kind of the redeeming factor behind the pivot gun as well. The pivot gun's a gimmick until it's out and it shoots like a demon. The This is kind of a gimmick until it's out and it does shoot very well. Now, the, the more redeeming factor on this than the pivot gun is that this is 700 bucks mm -hmm. as opposed to like 1500 or even 2000 mm -hmm. with the, the POF uh, lever gun. And this is affordable in the same sense that the, the Sub 2000 is. It probably comes about 100 bucks more than the Sub 2000. And I'm shitting on the Sub 2000 again. I, I call that guys, they always get mad at me. But come on, you gotta take a little shit every once in a while if you're gonna make stuff like that. <laughs> and uh, this gun, I mean, for all of its faults, is with the screws and the plastic rail and the lack of kind of ergonomics, it still runs really well because the things that you need do work, right? So like the charging handle is easy to get to and it's simple. The safety, even though it takes a little getting used to, is right where it needs to be. The trigger is about four and a half pounds, so it's a good trigger, unlike the kel -Tec. And the uh, the rail is very similar in ergonomics to an AR. Uh, the, the optic sits the same height as an AR, so it all feels really good and it feels very intuitive to shoot, which is why you get results like this. I mean, no malfunction so far. We're almost 100 rounds in, and it does as advertised. All right, you're rolling. All right. See what you got with the folding carbine. See, like, people say it's a gimmick, but, like, you don't have to fold it if you don't want to. Right. And if you don't fold it, it shoots really nice. I that mean, was super fun. If that thing didn't fold, and it was just a $700 9mm carbine, in my opinion, it'd be worth it. That's a lot of fun, and I'm going to shoot one more mag. All right. Yeah, get her. Well, that's about 150 rounds with no malfunctions. It shoots really nice. It has low recoil. Makes the stock is dance. comfortable. The folding thing is interesting. I wouldn't say it's the finest idea ever made, but I gotta say, as far as like PCCs go, I mean, that shoots Fun. better than the new Springfield St. Victor. Yep. And it folds and it's cheaper. Yep. So, I mean, so I don't know. I mean, I can't really talk shit about it now that I've shot it. Cause right. I mean, it, it rocks a little. I feel like Smith & Wesson is winning in price a lot with yeah. a lot of these guns but yeah. also their stuff is just always so comfortable yeah it was it was much more comfortable to shoot yeah. than the lc or the uh 
the pivot gun or even the uh, the POF lever gun, obviously. Yep. I, I'm, uh, I'm kind of yep. happy about the stock, the grip, the recoil, and the rail interface. Kind of the main stuff that you use works well. When you fold it, you can keep the optic on. That's pretty nice. Yep. Uh, all the things I was worried about uh, didn't really affect the shooting. Yep. Uh, it might affect long-term durability, but uh, everything but that slide release. That slide release can go pound sand. All right, so first impressions are better than I expected, to be honest with you. I initially got this gun out and I was like, why would you make something like this? <laughs> but uh, I get it, I understand. With the new pistol brace regulations and stuff, people are trying to figure out ways to get guns smaller and smaller because people have gotten used to uh, convenient firearms they can use for self-defense. The ATF decided that that shouldn't be a thing you should have. So now gun companies are trying to figure out how to get you a convenient gun that can fold and be small that you can legally own. So. Let's go through my first experiences with a gun and let's talk about some of the things that I was upset with, how those actually worked, and whether those were a problem. So first off, the shooting performance of the gun was actually a lot better than I thought it was. It has low recoil for a blowback operation system, which is nice. Blowback operation is notoriously simple and reliable, and in this case, it was extremely reliable. Part of that is because they used a well-known action. Part of that is because they used uh, solid magazines. I saw a couple people complaining that they used M&P mags instead of the, uh, wow, I got my glove stuck there, uh, used M&P mags instead of the Glock mags. I would prefer the M&P mags because they're metal, they're slick, they come out of the gun really easy, and that's kind of nice. I also have a ton of these, so that doesn't bother me. Speaking of the mags, though, they need to figure out a way to not have these sleeves on it because that's ridiculous. I understand that maybe for, like, concealed carry gun with a bigger magazine, something like that, but you should probably figure out a way to at least make some sort of proprietary base plate that can cover this job without having to do this. Um, the second thing I didn't like was how the magazines are stored in the stock. I don't like that. I don't like that they're reverse of the way I think they should be. I absolutely despise this locking system. I think it should be a uh, friction fit. That way, you, if you want them out, you can pull them out without having to work with a gizmo or anything like that. Anything that has a retention system that's a little goofy, I'm never on because those always remind me of those times where you're trying to pull a mag out of something or put a mag into something and you, you're doing something wrong but you don't know you are, right? So it's always good to be able to kind of force your way through when it comes to a self-defense situation. So like, if you have like a sling on your rifle, for example, some people use like a rubber band or some people use like an actual strap and I use a rubber band because if I'm in a hurry and my brain's too dumb to figure stuff out, I could just pull really hard and break the thing. And that's just the way I think. So coming back to the stock, I actually really like the stock. Now it's not adjustable and that does kind of suck, but the benefit is very comfortable, it's very uh, minimalist and it does help you carry an extra 50 rounds, which is nice. The grip is nice. I, it, it looks a little uh, hatched on there, but it looks really nice. That was kind of my complaint about the LC carbine and it sticks with this. Trigger guard's very functional. Uh, the safety, if I could get used to it, is really functional. My issue is for some reason, my brain doesn't have like multiple steps in it. So like I'm, I'm, so, I'm so thinking about how to fold the gun out I for, and load the gun and charge the gun, I forget that I have like a fifth step on the safety. So. Little 50-50 on that. I absolutely hate the slide release. Uh, I feel like they need to do something with that. The rail is super comfortable. It looks nice, but I would prefer an aluminum one-piece rail. That's just me. Threaded barrel is nice in case you want to put stuff on there. The problem I have with that is I saw some reviews with the suppressor, and it kind of defeats the whole freaking purpose of being able to fold the gun in a nice convenient package, because if you have a suppressor on there, what's the point? So I go 50-50 on that as well. Uh, the uh, the flip-out system is nice. I initially thought it was cheesy, but it's really easy to use, and it doesn't it doesn't mess up like the pivot gun does, or it doesn't really mess up like the Keltec. One of the issues with the Keltec is it does have a locking mechanism on the front, and if you don't remember that while you're trying to fold it out, remember in a hurry. Uh, you can just flip this thing out because it's just friction fit, and I really do like that. Now, will that wear over time? I honestly don't know. I don't think so, but uh, either way, I would prefer just being able to force it out than have to mess with any switches or any weird shit like that. Uh, charging handle looks weird, but was super functional. It's ambi on either side, that's very nice. My wife shot it left-handed, had no problem with ejection in your face or anything like that, not, not outside anyway. Uh, <laughs> and overall, uh, all the things I didn't like about it really are kind of cosmetic or potential issues. There's no actual issues. I mean, it shot really well. It was really reliable. It takes available magazines. It's cheap. 
it's lethal, and it's functional. So if you're into a folding rifle, and you maybe like the pivot gun, but you don't want to pay that much, maybe you like the kel but you want something that works, it's a good way to go. I also forgot to mention, we are gonna be doing a full review on this. This is just my initial impressions, mind you. This is not a recommendation. Uh, we will have a full review here in the future, a couple months down the road. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle.